Hey, I'm Marty. I'm Finn. And this is Burbs Listens. We're reviewing Mile the High Club's most recent album, Going, Going, Gone. While listening to this album, the only thing as I kept progressing and progressing through it is I kind of got this visual in my head. And I imagine that if th this album would be characterized as something visual, it'd be if you gave a jazz musician acid 10 to 15 minutes before his set, and slowly and slowly as he plays his normal 30 minute set, you know he does, he gets a synth, drops on his lap while he's oh, doing it. So it gets more synthy and synthy as the acid kicks in, and more like distorted and yeah. kind of away from reality, which kind of matches with the title, like going, going, gone. Yeah. So I think he's definitely trying to play into this kind right. of like psychedelic, like out of world experience right. type it takes of thing. Some but, time to get there. But yet so, has yeah. the roots. Yeah. of a jazz album right if that makes sense yeah, yeah no, i like absolutely. to go there and stuff and how would like would you say the transitions on here like, how do you think you transition through songs do you think that, that do you like that aspect of it i do and I, I like i think what you're exactly saying is great he took advantage of a build-up mm -hmm. but it wasn't just a single build-up in a song it was a build-up through the entire album to get to that final enthralling moment that you're waiting for i yeah. guess uh, which was just full force Synthesizers, you actually still had those horns, you had those claps, still, you had yeah. just really peaceful and what felt like really genuine. I thought genuine, you know, kind of like instrumentals. Yeah, it, it, it was very pretty. Um, and I guess I liked how they didn't mind, they, they wanted to take their time. Yeah. And you didn't hear the first vocals until literally like five minutes into the album. And I didn't even understand, like, is this just an instrumental? Yeah. And it, it was fine by me. It was beautiful to hear. I, I really enjoyed how they took their time getting to where they wanted to be. Yeah, I, de I definitely think that it, he did, he does a really good job on building. Like, and not, it, 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 this album doesn't act as individual songs. Right. It acts as a whole, rather. Because right. when I usually look through an album, I think about, I'm like, I usually am grabbing songs. You know, I'm like, I'll, I'll grab, oh, that, like that, I like that. Right. Not that many songs I took that I'm like, hey, I'll add that to the playlist, which I usually do with almost every album. Because I feel like it's, if I add only one song, it takes away from the whole album right. as a whole and that whole listening experience. So I don't even want to like take a song. The only one that I think like that really struck my eye, like a one song is Waving probably. I think Waving, one of the closers on the album. Right. And Waving really, it starts off with silence and it's at the it's at the back half. So you, this is when I would say the peak of him is acid is kicking in. I know it's kind of a weird reference, but I feel like this is the only way to explain this. And he, is having this psychedelic wave land that's crazy and he's kind of like going away farther and farther from reality he's waving away right. from reality and i think that's like one of the songs that is the epitome of my idea that i'm thinking like that i would think you yeah, imagine this album to be right the whole album aspect really sits in when you have the kluges i think that's how you pronounce it the kluges one and two i really hope i'm not butchering it i'm sorry if i am but that really, I think the, those are only instrumentals and they really act as interludes, kind of forcing the narrative of the album with this oh, yeah. synth yeah. And pattern. To, to speak upon that, I, I wrote down in my notes, it felt like I was just sitting in like a million dollar hotel. There's a little band in the background. They're just sitting exactly. there. You're just there for the experience. There doesn't even need to be vocals. You're just there. You're listening to expertise. It felt like it was a professional jazz musician most of the time. Like yeah. the expertise that was flowing throughout it felt like you were at a concert, honestly. It was incredible. I would imagine that he he would listen, he probably listened to a ton of jazz, like what 50s, 50s jazz, right before he listened to get inspiration to create this. Right. Cause it's like, a, it's like a, a nuanced sample. That's how I'd say it. It's like, yeah, if you listen to a sample of like some, like a jazz musician, he's like, okay, I'm gonna take that in and really take their style and right. everything artistically about them and put that in. And I thought that was a really cool job to do in right. something like that. And, the one other thing I wanna I wanna hit on is the solos in this album. Yes. I think that there are I have a, I have a few written down that I would, like Dizonian State that um, trumpet and yes. piano solo are, yes. are, are, are phenomenal and I mean that saxophone and piano solo. My apologies are absolutely phenomenal. The trumpet solo and waving at the end of it when he's talking kind of like I'm talking about like that peak descent right. and the keyboard solo in Dawn Patrol are those are, like these are three the. The three solos I heard, I'm like, wow, he does a really good right. job of mixing up. And they're kind of like crazy. They're out there. They're left field. And I'm like, I love it, you know, doing that. Right. How do you feel about the solos? I thought it was really incredible. Like you said in Dionysian, I thought that was beautiful. I felt like I was playing Mario. Yeah. I literally yeah. felt like I was playing Mario. And I, I felt he did a good job with the solos. Where's a little break? You were enthralled for so long. You're allowed to just take a break, 
relax, and just be hip with that one solo. I felt it was perfect. Absolutely. Yeah, going into like a qualm of this album, I think one that I think it really does is I think they're separate, like he has this idea, and I think, he, I wish he went more and more to the going, going, gone aspect of it. Right. And even though he talks about how it's like this acid true, I would say, and stuff like that, going, going, gone, but I wish it would be more like distorted and kind of crazy towards the end. And I feel like even when he, he played with those distortions, they weren't really like, they were, it, you couldn't really tell if it was just like synth spamming or if it was just like kind right. of out there. It didn't seem stylistically. And I feel like if he drawn out that distortion towards the back end of the album, like this going, going, gone. Right. Even just mentality. that final song where you just ended it and it's just craziness. Yeah. You're finally entering that zone of just completely gone yeah, yeah no, exactly I think, I, I think you're exactly I, right that's the one problem i think is like obviously it's talking about some psychedelic mood like i mean hey. going going i mean we i think we imagined that but i feel like I, if he played in like started out very nice normal right. you know having nothing going on which he did like start off with like, and that gave me a good opening for it. but if he really played that sort this could be a, a top five album of the year if, right. he, if he brings that takes those elements it kind of made falls into his idea because it's a great it idea a progressive story it's a great idea I, yes. so yeah, like, i think the yes. narrative kind of falls flat towards the end it's like it's kind of like a climax. I mean, it's like a, a rising action that just never has a climax. It's like, I, I it just rises right. and then slowly valleys, you know what I'm saying? Like goes in like a, right. plateaus. I, I think you're right. You could have played off that climax and then just completely declined yeah. into absolutely nothing. And, then, right. and that would have been like, wow. They, they, see, that? I think that would have really shown this idea. And I think it would have been a, a great idea going forward. There's this one album, I actually can't even remember the name. It is about this man, he... He he made this six hour album talking about um, dementia, a person going, he tries to symbolize musically of a person going through dementia. And it starts off the same way, very jazzy, very, and I wish right. I knew the album name, but and I'll figure this out later. But um, like a very jazzy, but and then it slowly gets distorted and almost into like nothingness, like right. playing nothing. And kind of like, it's the idea of what happens with dementia and stuff. And I kind of feel some of this elements going in there. And I wish he kind of took into that and said, but made it more of psychedelic rather than just, right. he just had straight jazz. That, that'd be the, really the only qualm. I, li I like a lot of the, the distortion and things though that he was able to um, capitalize on. I think you're right. I guess one question I will ask okay. is, uh, I talked to you about this a couple of days ago. I felt this album had a lot of comparisons uh, sound wise, a more psychedelic version of King Cruel, a more jazzy yeah, version yeah. of King Cruel. Who would you kind of compare this album to? What what artist would you give uh, either feature in on this, or would oh, you say like question. this kind of sounded like them in another aspect? You know, a feature that I think would be really interesting. You know, I going on your King Cruel thing. I'll start off there first. The King Cruel. I, I think I didn't see it as much as you did in that right. sense, which yeah. I, I understand stuff like that. But kind of as I'm listening to it more, I think it'd be a very a very smoother King if King Cruel wasn't as rugged, loud, and stuff right. like that. So I, I could kind of see a lot of his aspects, and I totally think their collaboration, if they did it, oh, if you're gonna bring yeah. out a feature, yeah, that, that would be disgusting. absolutely yeah. phenomenal. And I think they could really juxtapose each other with it. So right. I kind of see some of the elements with it, especially like some of the guitar on here or something, like right. some of it going through. But I I don't know if I fully see it. Feature wise, I really like to see any like um you know Helena Demond, uh, the one on JPEG Mafia's. Yeah. Oh my, here's a cornball. I think she I could have a see. really good voice on there. Was right. it Helen? Is Helen Helena David? I believe. Thank you. Yeah. Free the frail. Yeah, free the frail. Yeah. Like has a beautiful. I think she would work really well. I really did like Winter in this one. It was all in Portuguese. Winter really killed it. I think okay. her name is Sophia Winter. If I'm okay. not, but I'm not exactly sure. She is uh just absolutely phenomenal and i think that see i see another one of those voices like hold on, would be really cool and then i'd also like to see a steve lacy on this if i can use it i think he could add some element of like a very like upbeat you know jazz to it. like a little bit right. yeah, i think he'd fall into that jazz yeah, wave very right. well like that internet kind of style a little bit and then push that into the jazz wave that mild high club is showing here so right and uh, I think that that'd be you. How about you? What do you, if you were going to go feature? For my feature, I think I'd go with Always, um, Canadian Dream Pop Band. Uh, I got two albums to their name, but I think they would play in very beautifully in here. Dream Pop, well, this isn't a Dream Pop album. Mm -hmm. I think both genres kind of capture the same sort of energy. Like they're both kind of that just relax, listen, get captured by our music. Um, really good solo so here and there. I think we'll just put a nice little maybe energy thrown in the end or even in that middle as we were talking about they'd be that nice climax song and then from there maybe you start to climb go to like distortions right stuff. as a whole i think this album has a great idea and a great narrative at the base and i think that this right. album has a great 
idea uh, and narrative, the one thing I do like about his narrative is a whole. It is not individualized songs. It is a collective being in one. And I think right. that Mile Heckle really does a good job, and I really like how he mixes psychedelic and jazz in a way that I've never seen before. And some of those experiences were wow. But the narrative sadly falls flat, and I think that right. Going Going Gone doesn't really meet the expectations it should have, especially after a four year wait we've had for this album right. and stuff. And I think it doesn't meet that expectation, but has a lot of good. I'd probably give it a 6.5 to 7 out of 10. That'd be my rating. Right. I'll, I'll probably sit right around the same. I'll go exactly, I'll go 6 to 7 out of 10. Um, I think it's always a great thing when you're saving a collective of songs, like back to back to back mm -hmm. songs, like you were saying earlier. I think that's always a great thing because you don't want to just cut it off with that one song listening. You want a three song or two song progression. Mm -hmm. That's always big for me. But like you said, it felt like there wasn't, there should have been a, more, a larger narrative than there actually was. And honestly, when I'm listening through it, I didn't really feel the narrative. It was more, sure, I was enthralled by the oh. musical ensemble, um, but did it really give me anywhere with the narrative? No. And like you said, going, going, gone, you expect something larger there. Um, I expected more. Yeah, I expected more. Expect more. But will it be something that I throw on every once in a while just to relax and sit around? Absolutely. Yeah. Unless I would listen to it full through. I wouldn't go song by song. No, no, no. no. I, I rarely will listen to it song by song, but yeah. through a full through, definitely will. But. Yeah. All right, well, I'm That's Marty. Right. I'm Finn. This is The Spins. We out. Peace.